Hooray, we have a Q and A. Yeah, welcome to today's video where I have pages upon pages of questions from you. Thank you so much. I put a shout out on social media this week asking for a list of questions, things that you might be interested in, whether it's beauty, wellness, lifestyle, inspiration, and boy, did you guys come up with some great questions. So in the selection process, what I tried to do is sort of find common ground, pick questions that were asked by a lot of you. So hopefully I'll be answering your question in the process. But my goodness, there were so many good ones. And if I don't answer your question, what I will do is then comb through all the questions on social media and try to answer each one individually may take time might be a process but I'll get there uh, so thank you thank you for all your questions and you will notice that a lot of you are asking a lot of the same things so I feel like I'm going to be able to tackle your question in the process I'm keeping my fingers crossed my first question comes from Annette Leclerc Kesserling and she says as I'm getting older I struggle with finding foundation for combo skin that doesn't accentuate the lines and make my skin look older and dull please help that is a common problem in that let me say this when when we paint our homes we don't just start with the paint we put on a primer primer is really important for making your foundation look flawless helping it to last minimizing those pores. So if you're applying foundation without a primer, might I suggest that you start doing that. Uh, look for a pore minimizing primer. There are so many good ones on the market and believe me, you don't have to spend a lot of money. The next step is finding foundation. And if you were just to go online and do a search of foundations for mature skin, you will find a plethora of foundations with reviews depending on your skin's needs. As we get older, our skin tends to get a little drier. So sometimes we need a more creamy foundation, a foundation that won't settle in the lines, uh, something that gives us a more dewy appearance because we tend to get dry and putting a matte foundation and powder on top of that just accentuates the dryness, which accentuates the lines. So depending on what your needs are, whether you have oily skin, find a foundation that's oil-free. If you have very dry skin, look for something that's creamy, but primer is key in starting that process. Many, many foundations out there. Again, search foundations for mature skin. You'll have so many choices. Sue Ellen Whalen says, Hi, Dominique. Uh, just wondering what foods you eat to keep fit and slim. What would be your daily food intake? Do you eat sugar? <laughs> well, considering that it was my husband's birthday a few days ago, the answer to that would be yes. It was a cake fest for an entire weekend. So I am currently off of the sugar because as tasty as it is, I absolutely hate the way it feels. So if you were to look at a food log of mine, what it would show is basically very fresh, wholesome foods. When I go grocery shopping, I shop the perimeter of the grocery store. So I'm buying the produce, I'm buying the meats. I have a little 2% milk for my coffee. That's about the only dairy I try to consume, a cheese every once in a blue moon, but it's all very fresh, wholesome food. Lots of lean meats, lean proteins, tons of vegetables and salads. I try to stay away from processed foods, anything in a box or a can. I'm not a fan. So that's basically what my journal would look like. I love my breakfast is a, an egg with an Ezekiel muffin, which is the sprouted grain. Um, that's the only bread I try to have in a day. Lunch could be a salad with a protein and dinner, usually a piece of fish or chicken with vegetables. Sugar on rare occasions, like birthdays and fun things like that. Kim Arnold asks, how does a woman get confidence in herself? I'm 56 and have been primarily a stay-at-home wife and mom. I don't like pictures of myself taken. My family gets so mad at me, but I just don't like looking at myself. Not sure why. Uh, I'm not sure why either, Kim. You know, I think, in my opinion, the hardest and most respected job in the world is a stay-at-home mom and wife. You have people depending on you and it's not easy. It is not easy being there 24 seven for everybody. And I think maybe what I'm sensing is that in the process, you feel like you're getting lost. Um, and might I encourage you that even though you're tending to everybody else's needs to please tend to your own, take care of yourself, 
don't feel guilty for seeking extra sleep, taking time to exercise, taking time to watch my videos. So maybe you can get some ideas on how to reinvent yourself. Um, invest in a hobby, discover something in you besides being wife and mom, cultivate something new. And I think that if you do that for yourself, uh, you may have a different view of yourself. You may feel a little reinvigorated, re-energized, and then your self-esteem might come to play and you might not feel so bad about taking pictures and, and being photographed. And you know what? Take your camera, flip it on selfie, and pose and try different shots and angles. We all have better angles and looks and smiles and sometimes we just don't know how to achieve it and maybe just practicing in front of a camera and learning what angle makes you look and feel the best would be a great thing because then you know what to do when a camera comes your way but take time for yourself please and and don't ever feel like you know you don't like looking at yourself uh, Susan Big says with your busy schedule do you put the kiddos uh, to work helping with weekly chores? Do you do your own house cleaning or do you have a housekeeper? I struggle with balancing it all. What's your secret? Susan, uh, let me be the first to tell you, I cannot do it all. Uh, I ha we have a home with four younger children and two parents who work full time. It is impossible to be able to tackle all the housekeeping chores. So yes, we have somebody who helps us with our housekeeping needs to do the heavy lifting. With that said, let me emphasize that we as a family have chores and rules and duties to perform in the house. Uh, every kid is responsible for their room, their bed, uh, nothing on the floor to pick up, counters get dirty, you wipe them down. And, you know, we tell the kids all the time, the housekeeper is not your personal maid. They're not here to pick up your junk. That's for you to do. The housekeeper is here to keep our home clean. So we handle a lot of the stuff to maintain, but we do have help. And sometimes it's good to know when to say when <laughs> and recognize that you can only do so much. And if need be, save up some extra money to get some help in that area. Uh, let's see, Debbie Bauer says, aside from not shampooing your hair every day, how do you avoid breakage in the front of your hair? Are there some products that you have tried that help with this? Um, yes. It Here's the problem. When you have dry, curly, color-treated hair like mine, breakage can happen very easily, especially when you do the highlights right up here around the face. The hair tends to be the thinnest and the most fragile around the face. So a couple of things that I do is I won't do the highlight right up front. I'll have them set it back just a little bit where the hair is a little bit stronger. When processing the bleach, I request that it not be processed all the way uh, to a midway. I don't want to be blonde blonde. I'm more of a honey blonde, so they don't have to process it as far as a true blonde would be. Um, but there are also many products that are out on the market for helping to style with heat. So be on the lookout for those. Anything that helps with heat, usually it's a, a leave-in after you shampoo and condition, a spray on. But if you are a blow dryer and a curling iron -er, then you're going to need something like that to protect your hair because breakage will happen. And on the weekends, if you can back off from the heat and just let your hair air dry and do a leave-in conditioner, that really, really helps in making your hair kind of go the extra mile. Um, Sandy says, my skin is very, very oily. I do okay during the day blotting and powdering, but at the end of the day, um, and someone says, let's go for dinner and drinks. How do I quickly give myself a fresh look without scrubbing my face and starting all over? It, to me, the best thing to do, because what happens throughout the day is you blot with the blotting tissues and you add powder, it, it eventually is causing your foundation that you applied in the morning to separate. And so it, it starts to get a little patchy. What I do is I have a little foundation and a brush that I carry with me along with a loose powder. At the end of the day, when I can see that separation happening, I take that brush, dab it in the foundation just a little bit, and I start to kind of reapply it and blend it in areas where I feel that my makeup is starting to fade. Hit it with that powder again to set it, reset the blush, and you're good to go. It looks as if you just started from scratch, but it's a wonderful touch-up way at the end of the day if your day now turns into night and you are the Energizer Bunny and you just keep going and going and going. Uh, Donna Wilkins says, I want to get some sneakers that are a little dressier than a running shoe. I'm 50 and young, but don't want to look like I'm trying to be 20. Do you have any recommendations? Um, yes. Again, if you go online and you search for elegant, 
uh, running shoes or, or dressy sneakers, you'd be amazed at what pops up from Kate Spade to Michael Kors, from canvas to suede to glitter. The options are endless. So it just depends on what your personal style is. Um, right now, obviously the Converse All Stars are the biggest hit. Um, and I'll tell you what, I'm almost 50 and I wear them. So I think 50 is really your attitude and not your age. So it's whatever you feel comfortable in. But go online and search and you'll find an amazing assortment of dressy sneakers. Natalie says, um, are you experiencing any perimenopausal symptoms? If so, how are you managing them? I'm experiencing night sweats and hot flashes that are waking me up several times during the night. Hello, Natalie. <laughs> Let's talk. Yes, this, this has been my story, uh, was my story. It got so bad that I, I got help because I just couldn't take it anymore. And this is a personal journey that we all will have and not everybody's journey is going to be the same. That's why I brought my dear friend, Dr. Barbie Taylor on my channel. She now has a channel called Menopause Barbie with a ton of information, a huge database. So if you're looking for that kind of information, please go to her channel and check her out. Um, you know, my search took me to the Hotsey Health and Wellness Center here in Houston, where I take bioidentical hormones to supplement to help bring my levels uh, back to a point where I can sleep through the night without hot flashes and not feel miserable and uncomfortable and want to, you know, claw my hair out. So again, but but please invest in yourself start that journey, read, research, talk to a variety of doctors, because again, my way may not be your way, but it's important that you find a way. Christine Crudo says, really struggle with concealer. I tried many, uh, and if they're crease proof, they're so drying. Recommendations to keep that under eye smooth. I still, to this day, use the Tarte Creaseless Concealer. I adore it. I haven't changed. It has been my go-to concealer since day one on this channel. Um, it's a very oily, thick concealer. You take it and you pat it on and then you set it with powder. You would think that setting it with powder would just make it all sink into your lines. I don't know what happens. I don't know, I don't ask, but all I can tell you is it doesn't show. It really, really has a flawless, wonderful look. And I've had many women who have taken that recommendation and they've written me back saying, hands down, best concealer ever. So that's still to this day is my recommendation for you. Victoria Allison says, uh, what do you most struggle with in balancing your busy life? How do you manage it all? I'm 49, married with a four-year-old. I work four times as a professional and I often feel like I'm not doing well with balance. Victoria, I have a, a funny thing with balance myself and I've, I've come to this realization that balance isn't going to happen on a daily basis. There are some days that you're going to find work is going to get more of a priority or maybe your child or maybe nothing or it, it's never going to be a perfect finish at the end of the day. But I sort of look at my week and I find if I do that, I give myself a little fudge room. And so if at the end of a week, I feel like I invested in myself, I got the rest I needed. I put the time and effort into my work to be and do my best. I put the time and effort into my child and my children to be and do my best. That at the end of the week, if it all averages out, then I can feel pretty doggone good. And if I find that there are any deficiencies, then I'm mindful of it and I make sure I start my next week investing in that area. So please don't feel like at the end of the day, you gotta feel balanced because it ain't gonna happen. Um, Cheryl Harris Prairie, I'm not sure I've heard you talk about this, but what do you do to stay healthy on the inside? Do you take certain vitamins for skin, hair, and nails? Do you drink green juice or anything pertaining to hair, nails, and skin? Uh, vitamin and Vitamins and supplementation are very, very important to me for a couple of reasons. I'm of the belief that we do not get the nutrients that we need in our food supply. It, it's just not enough. Um, we don't get enough sunshine that we need to get optimum vitamin D levels. Um, also, as we get older and, and you want to maintain a healthy weight, you have to cut back on calorie intake because your metabolism isn't as fast as it used to be. Even with exercise and all of that, you still can't eat like a horse. So supplementation is very important. And again, that's a personal choice, what you take and how much, um, but it's important to seek 
a professional help guidance uh, whatever in that area because I do believe supplementation is very very important for all those things for immune health cardiovascular health brain health and you know things like biotin for hair skin and nails so again research that and decide what's best for you and your needs at this particular time uh, Maria Alfieri says how do you deal with worry if the kids are sick or behaving in a worrisome manner how do you stay positive do you ever think the worst you know our our minds can be our own worst enemy sometimes and worry is probably the most useless emotion out there so if I find myself getting into that zone where I'm worrying a lot about something I, I bring myself back to a place that I know and trust and that is do I focus on my problem Problems, or do I focus on my God and I find that when I choose to put the emphasis and the focus on my God then my problems are suddenly manageable so what does that mean it means we can sit there and stew and worry but what is that going to do how is that going to help the situation or make things better but if we pray about things meditate about things do the best that we can in our choices and and what we do day to day but the things that are out of our control instead of worrying about it have faith that there's a higher power that's going to help and you have to believe in that and pray to that and suddenly the worry starts to dissipate so that's how I handle it does it mean I'm worry free absolutely not but when I get to that place I have to just readjust my mindset to get out of that place because I know that it's totally counterproductive and counterintuitive uh, Shelly Kernan says I love your hair and how you're always changing it up where do you get your inspiration and what's next I don't know what's next all I know is that it's growing it's growing by leaps and bounds it's growing and maybe it'll grow to here I don't know maybe I'll get bored and, and it won't but for inspiration I love to go to Pinterest I find that Pinterest has the best hair selections out there you just type in your search words and what you're looking for and poof I mean a gazillion different styles show up um, maybe even one of mine so it's it's a wonderful database for hair inspiration so I can't recommend that enough um, Cheryl Smith says what do we do with our necks mine is looking more like a chicken ouch um, yes necks necks do tend to change as we get older mine is um, mine is changing as well so what I'm starting to do is the retin-a and the glycolic acid treatment that I've done for my face I am now pulling down on my neck to help make things smooth and to make the skin a little more supple um, but you know things like the muscles here and and these bands here you know it's it's age <laughs> what can I say and when if you're lean and then you exercise and you know you use these muscles they're just gonna show more so my mindset is I'm just gonna look at my neck as a symbol of my healthy and fit lifestyle so there um, Emma Ewing says how do you maintain such pretty white teeth what products do you use or do you go to your dentist to get it done I don't I don't do professional teeth whitening I don't use crest white strips I don't use any of that I just use perio bright all-natural toothpaste and for whatever reason I get mine at Whole Foods now I buy it online um, but it's it's got a whitening agent it's non abrasive and for some reason it works and I'm a big coffee drinker so I don't know that's that's my story and I'm sticking to it um, Ashley Fagan Contreras says you don't have any crow's feet what's your secret um, again that would be the combination of the glycolic acid as well as the retin-a and I do pull that up into the eye area um, my my uh, concealer my tart helps with minimizing that look um, and I also will do a little Botox around the eye area to help and I'm going to talk about that a little bit more in a moment um, and then Ashley also says how do you budget for Christmas with such a large family that's a good question and we have two routes that we take if we travel during the Christmas holiday the travel is the gift and we don't do presents because that in my opinion is just major overindulgence and the trip is an experience of a lifetime and where memories are made and to me that's the ultimate gift if we choose not to travel then we set a dollar amount per child and they can write up their list and it has to fall within that dollar amount and that's it you know we stay on a budget every family needs one and children need to learn the value of that 
in my opinion. Catherine Tacconi says, do you use any special products or laser treatments to treat your skin for age spots or melasma? Or is the combo of the glycolic acid and the retinol enough to keep it away? Right now it is, but I have to tell you, Catherine, there are so many neat lasers and things on the market available through a dermatologist's office or a plastic surgeon's office to help with fine lines, discoloration, redness, rosacea, um, things that kind of take it to that next level. I'm not there yet, but when I feel I am, I will certainly research and look into it. I know a lot of people who've had that skin pen done recently with tremendous results for smoothing the skin, fine lines and wrinkles. So again, this is an area that is really evolving and it's always worth researching to see maybe what's best for you. Dinah Rivas Northup says, how do you maintain such great posture? At the age of 45, I've taken my neck, shoulders and back for granted. Um, posture is key, Dinah. I am mindful of it daily. I'll catch myself in the mirror and I will correct. When I'm sitting on the news desk, I purposely sit without a back to my chair to force me to sit up straight because I find if there's a back, you tend to sort of slouch. Without one, you sit more erect. Um, there's a wonderful trick to help with posture. Here's what you do. You take a uh, towel, roll it up, so it'll you know maybe get about this big around. Stick it, you're gonna lay down on the ground, hard surface. Stick the towel underneath your upper back here. Lay down on it, and what it's gonna do is it's gonna force your chest to come out and force your neck to go back on the floor and then stretch your arms out all the way to help stretch out the chest muscle and the combination of doing that getting your neck all the way flat pushing your chest out it's see it's the opposite of this it's this but it's overextended lay on the ground for a couple of minutes build up to 10 minutes use that as a time to meditate to pray to think about things plan your day or whatever but it's a great way to help get your posture back in line I do that all the time. Let's see, Shauna Farish Login says, have you ever considered getting lash extensions? I had them done once and I hated them. And I don't know if it was the lash or how it was applied, but I could feel it. I could feel the glue. And then I'm so used to kind of washing my eyes off with soap at night and I couldn't do that. And then by three weeks, half of them had fallen out and I look like a scarecrow. So I don't know. I mean, I've seen people who have had great results with lash extensions and they replace them every four weeks. Maybe I need to try again. I don't know. I'm on the fence about that one. Jody Ray says, how do you keep your lips so full? <laughs> well, if you see my son, you know that he has full lips. And if you see my mother, you know that she has full lips. So this is sort of a genetic thing that runs in the family. But let me tell you this when it comes to makeup, lighter colors on the lips will make them look bigger. Darker colors will make them look smaller. So if you wear a darker color on your lip, just outline your lips with a lip liner, just a little bit on the outside, not too much to help create that more enlarged look. Um, a lot of women these days will go to the doctor for lip injections. And can I just err on the side of caution that if you're going to do that, please, please do it conservatively. Um, you know, you, you certainly don't want your lips to walk into the room before you do. So <laughs> we've seen many cases of that. So a little less is more less is more but you can really create a lot of illusions with just the lipstick colors and how you choose to define your lips but but these are these are mine nez08 says hi be so kind to tell about jewelry brands and jewelry pieces a lady 40 plus should wear to look chic and classy i find that as i've gotten older i'm wearing less and less jewelry i used to wear big chunky pieces all on my neck um, and I just find it's too busy. I'm, I'm a little more pared down. I like a simplistic look. If I want pop, I'll go for a big cuff, a big ring, maybe a long earring for nighttime. But other than that, during the day, I just like very simple classic pieces or just a simple little gold chain or a lariat. Um, dainty, I just find to be more elegant and more regal. So that's how my taste has sort of morphed over the years. Pixel Cheek says, what advice would you give to a mother going back to work after maternity leave? Let me tell you, I am stressed out. Um, yeah, that's a tough one. And as a, as a working mom, as a mother who after 13 weeks had to leave her child at home and go to work, let me just tell you that my child is a 
healthy, happy 11 year old boy who doesn't hate me. <laughs> so even though you feel like it's the worst thing that could ever happen, it's not. It's not. And don't feel guilty about it. Please don't feel guilty about it. We do what we have to do. We love our children with everything that we have. We give them as much time of ours as we possibly can. The key is to make that time quality time. And also we're good for nobody when we're exhausted and frazzled. And sometimes not getting away doesn't necessarily make you such a great mom because you don't have patience. For me, work became a place of quiet, ironically, in the news business. Who would have thought? Um, but it was a place for me to sort of have adult conversation, to regroup, to catch my breath. And when I came home, I was refreshed as a parent. So please don't look at it in a bad way. Find the positives in these moments. 50 Shades of Gold. <laughs> Hi, Dominique. My name is Jillian, and my question is related to beauty products. I recently fell into some difficult times with finances. Gone are my high-end organic serums, face creams, and no more stops at the colorist, top dollar haircuts and facials. Ugh. Basically, it feels as though the rug has been pulled out from under me. What's a girl to do? Jillian, a girl's got to do what a girl's got to do. And if you just saw my recent video of uh, full face under $100, let me tell you that cosmetic companies, beauty cream companies have come a long way in what they offer on a budget. You can find tremendous products at your drugstore. You can look like a million bucks for a hundred tops. So be savvy, just look. Don't feel like you have to spend a lot to look like you spent a lot. It's not true. It's really in technique and know-how and just finding the right products. And if you were to do an online search for the best value, the best products for under a certain price point, you would find so much information to help guide you there. But please do not feel bad about it. In fact, as you make your way out of your financial situation, I bet you that you won't go back to your old ways, that you will appreciate your more budget-minded nature, and maybe you'll splurge on a few products, but you're always gonna be looking for a deal, and that's a good thing. Kim Biddle says, Hi, Dominique. Thank you for your amazing YouTube channel. Thank you. Please tell me your secret for partnership happiness and the most important rules for effective speech. Um, partnership happiness is, to me, trust, respect, and acceptance. You have to have that in order to have a happy, functioning partnership with your spouse and significant other. Um, I, you know, I've learned a long time ago, you're not going to change people. They are who they are. So if you, if you don't like it, don't be with it. And if you like it, great, because it is what it is. You know, people can make slight behavioral modifications, but personality traits are there. They're there from the start. So those to me are the most important things. Effective speech. Um, well, don't just do what I just did. Say, um, <laughs> just, just talk. We, we, we use crutches. We use like, you know, uh, these are all crutches and bridges that we need to be mindful not to use. Feel comfortable with your language. Project. Don't be shy. Don't mumble and keep things to yourself. Confidence is key. So those are my tips. Miss Toto says, hi, this is Jesse. How do you deal with negative people and insulting remarks? Well, let me tell you, Jesse, I don't drink the Haterade. I have no interest, no desire to read it. I don't care if it's ugly. I hit the delete button. That's the greatest power we have, the delete button. I don't want to know. I don't care. Um, I really and truly, after having spent most of my adult life in the television news business and being subjected to any kind of comment you could possibly imagine, it's like water off of a duck's back. Whose word am I going to believe? Am I going to let other people's words define me or is it my word and my Heavenly Father's word? So that's how I choose to look at it. I just do not let others define who I am or affect me emotionally with hate speech. And there's a lot of it. Good morning, love. What's the craziest thing you've done to your hair? Love from Greece. Craziest thing ever. I was 13, went to the beach with my mother and a girlfriend, and my hair naturally is sort of a medium ash brown color. Took two bottles of sun in with me. Instead of spraying it, poured it. Sat out in the sun all day, went swimming in the ocean. Driving back home, I was sitting in the back seat, could see myself in the rear view mirror. Saw my hair processing a bright orange. I was mortified. I kept looking in the mirror. My mother kept eyeballing me in the mirror. Oh my God, oh my God, what's going on back there? The hair is turning orange. 
So we came home, I went to my nearest drugstore and the lady said, darling, you can't do anything about that. Your hair is gonna fall out. So there you have it. At the age of 13, I had bright orange hair and it grew in with the dark roots. So I don't know, maybe I was starting a trend back then, but that by far the most outrageous thing I have ever done. Orange is not my color. Orange is not the new black. <laughs> Okay, my next question comes from a viewer in Macedonia. She says, I would like to know your thoughts on face fillers. Do you have any experience with them? I admire how well you take care of yourself. You're beautiful, smart, eloquent. Whatever you do regarding beauty treatments with you, it never appears to seem superficial. Thank you. That's a very, very nice comment. Um, yes, and I promised you I would talk about this earlier. I do Botox and I have for a while because for me, I started showing prominent frown lines when I was in my 30s. I don't know if it's a genetic thing. I don't know if it's reading news for 20 plus years and it's a little depressing and down. You tend to frown a little bit. But I noticed that I was starting to look sort of frustrated and angry. And that's not who I am. So my initial reason for starting Botox was to soften the area on my forehead. Uh, Botox is a muscle paralyzer it's not a filler as you know so it really will take the edge off of frown lines and wrinkles in the forehead botox placement is so important and it's so important that i've decided that i'm going to do a video on it and show you how i do it because if it's not done a certain way, if the concentration of it is primarily in this area here, what happens is all of this paralyzes and comes down and then this right here comes way up. And we've all seen that, right? And that's not natural and that's not how we want to look. We want our brows to be normal brows, not to be high, high arch, but to have a natural arch line. and a good Botox provider will know how to do that. You don't want to change your brow line. You just want to relax it so that you're not scowling all the time. So yes, I'm a, I'm a big fan of doing that. Uh, you can also do it right here on the outside of the eyes. So when you smile, it helps to minimize those little smile lines as well. And if you've done those over the years, then it certainly does prevent those wrinkles from settling in. But, um, you know, I, I find that with anything, with any type of Botox or any filler that anybody chooses to do, conservative is key. You want to look like you. You want to look like you've been on vacation, like you've been sleeping an extra three hours a night, but you don't want to change yourself and become something and somebody else. Uh, that's when things, I think, tend to go just a little too far. Hey, Tracy. Do you ever have a day where you just stay home in your PJs all day? You don't leave the house and get dressed. Once in a blue moon. And when it happens, it's my favorite day ever. I fantasize about those days. I love them that much. Kelly Dessen says, your home is lovely. And I'm wondering if you hire somebody to help clean or if you do it all yourself. And how do you fit it into your busy life? Well, as you heard, I definitely hire out. Um, also wanting to know with a house, do you focus on pretty or do you focus on comfortable? And in my opinion, when it comes to decorating, both. Pretty can be comfortable. There's no reason why you have to sacrifice beauty in order to have comfort or to have beauty and uncomfortable. Sure, we've seen cases where that has existed, but I think the two can cohabitate beautifully and it's great when it does because then you feel wonderful in your space in both an aesthetic way, but also in a comfort way. Diane Hughes says, uh, how are you doing with the loss of your father and your son with the loss of his grandfather? My father passed away in March of this year. I'm sorry, Diane. How are you planning the holidays coming up and any difference since the loss of your dad? Hugs. Um, you know, time is a healer. People say that. It can, it can certainly, I don't know, seem trite, but it's true. Time is a healer and it's gotten better over time. With my son, we talk about him. We talk about my dad all the time and I look for those opportunities. I see a lot of my father in my son and I bring that out when I notice that. For the holidays, I am definitely baking my dad's puffer, his German pound cake, and I know that he will be ever present in my kitchen when I do so. And I believe in keeping memories alive. I believe in talking about him and celebrating him as often as I possibly can. 
Two red gloves. If you could have dinner with anybody, past or present, who would it be? And what would you ask him or her? Great question. I would love to have dinner with the late, great, former British Prime Minister, Margaret Thatcher. And I would ask her what it was like being the Iron Lady swimming against the tide of the time. She fascinates me. So there you have it. Your questions, my answers. I hope yours was answered in all of that. I really do. I, I could have done a five hour video with all the great questions. So please keep them coming my way. You are such an amazing audience. I can tell that you're seeking really quality information, things to impact your life, things to create change and to push you forward. And I'm so happy and honored that you see me as one of the vehicles in your life to help you achieve that. So I thank you from the bottom of my heart. Please continue to follow me on social media, KPRC Channel 2 at 6 and 10, and let me know what you would like to see for next week's video. Be bold and be blessed with your life, and I'll see you next time.